Does a funny thing happen to you on the way to a championship? You screw it up? Maybe it's time you look in a different direction to solve your playing problems. My name is Stan Kellner, and don't you think it's time you tap that unused talent people say you have? The truth is, whether you're a beginner or a candidate for All-American honors, you will never become the player you want to be unless you master the mind game, namely real game self-confidence, relaxation, and concentration. Basketball Cybernetics is the name of our program, and it was only after developing and implementing the inner game techniques and drills in our practices back in 1968 that we turned our program around. Our team went on to win nine consecutive championships. Not bad considering we lost as many games as we won prior to incorporating cybernetics training. Now each summer, thousands of athletes, both boys and girls, learn our program firsthand at one of our Yes I Can camps across the country. Now, I don't know if you believe in mental stuff yourself, but how many times has someone said to you it's all in your head when you missed the front end of a one-on-one -on -one or blew a gimme that would have tied the score? Do you realize that it is you alone who decide how good a player you will be? You decide how many missed layups, bad passes, and fumbles you'll make in a game. It's not the crowd, the court, the ball, your coach, or your genes which determine your game. In a short time, you'll completely understand why you have set certain restrictions on your game. You'll also understand a process that can liberate you from these self-restricting and self-defeating limitations. If you trust what you see here and sincerely follow our step-by-step -step program, you'll be free to move in a direction of becoming the player you want to be. Here are some of our promises. You'll jump higher, play quicker, make fewer mistakes, Play defense with the eye of the tiger. See the court better. Develop a shooting touch that will surprise even your mother. And learn how easy it is to convert cl clutch free throws. But more importantly, you'll know how to turn negative playing habits and motor skills like missed jump shots and poor hands into successful game habits. I had to learn the hard way over the years that it's not what you do well that gets you on top. It's the skills that you don't do well that will hold you back. Turning weaknesses into strengths is what it's all about. Basketball cybernetics introduces you to two factors that means the difference between success and failure, strengths and weaknesses. The first key is your own self-image. Well, without getting into a lot of psychological mumbo-jumbo, there is no factor more decisive to your game than how you see yourself as a player. There's truth to the proverb, the me I see is a me I'll be. It's a self-image that predicts what you can do and what you can't do on the court. The fact is, you think in terms of pictures, not words. All athletes do. There's a law of the mind that says changing the way you think about yourself will change the way you play. Improving these images that you carry around your head means improving your game. How many windows are there in the front of your house? As you think of an answer, aren't you seeing your house? Now, just for a minute, think about an offensive weakness that you have. Let's go to the videotape of your mind and play out this little scene with me. Your team is down by one point in the closing seconds of an important ball game. The ball comes to you. You're forced to play your weakness. Do you see yourself finishing your play successfully, or do you see yourself screwing it up? Now, that's your self-image doing the talking. Of course, your self-image changes from skill to skill, quarter to quarter, in a game. But after improving your self-image with cybernetics training, you're going to find out how easy it is to improve your skills. Those I can'ts will turn into I can'ts, even poor hands into sure hands, if that's what you want. Positive thinking alone won't do it. Positive thinking is like jumping out of a plane without a parachute on, on the way down saying, so far, so good. Now, you know you're headed for a hard fall. Expecting I can is the real difference. You'll know why a picture is worth a thousand words. Through the magic of visualization and of using your eyes as video cameras watching the best on your team perform at what they do well, you're going to change your self-image and your game for the better. The fundamental law of basketball cybernetics is the way a player thinks is a way the player performs. The fundamental technique is to use repetitive and discipline mental pictures to change the way an athlete thinks. Winners have been using this 
mind method since the beginning of time. The second key to cybernetics training is that it can help you find a success mechanism inside your head, one that's always been there. And as soon as you learn how to operate it, you'll be able to accomplish all kinds of playing goals and skills for yourself. The name of that mechanism? Well, it's called the subconscious. And for too long a time, you have just heard about the influence of the subconscious on your game. Now you'll know its real secrets for operating this important cybernetic device both on and off the basketball court. Let's take a closer look now at the specifics of cybernetics training and how it can help you put your game together. When a free throw shooter stands on a line and shoots, the player is employing the world's most sophisticated computer, the human brain, the control center for his performance. Applying some basic laws of cybernetics, the athlete is also activating the automatic guidance device for his free throw shooting performance, the subconscious, the real muscle and control behind his free throw shooting. It was the science of cybernetics that put brains into machines from the electric alarm clock to the electronic computer. Any machine that has its own thinking system built into it and works purposely on signals called feedback has done so because of the laws of cybernetics. The science of thinking machines can now teach coaches how to train athletes to do the same kind of efficient performance. By using cybernetics training, athletes can learn to program success responses into themselves as reliably as success responses have been installed into machines. Now, don't get the idea that I'm telling you that you're a machine. That's coaching heresy. The greatest power you have as an athlete is the freedom to choose. What I'm saying is that your brain, nervous system, and subconscious function no differently than a reliable electronic computer. Now, you must be wondering that if you have this magnificent human computer and a genie-like subconscious to do your bidding, why doesn't it produce the conditioned responses you want, like canning crucial free throws? The answer lies, you see, in the quality of feedback instruction it receives. Unfortunately, it has been unable to perform its feats of magical success because it has been confined in a prison of a negative self-image of a poor free throw shooter. It's not the subconscious that is to fall. It's the kind of information it receives. Suppose the wrong information was fed into a mechanical computer. Would it perform correctly? Of course not. A million dollar IBM computer wouldn't give you the right time of day without correct programming. Would the programmer curse the computer or junk it? I doubt it. What the programmer would do is simply examine the input instructions, and if they weren't any good, correct data would be reprogrammed into it. Man and machine function exactly in the same way. It is a poor free throw shooter's past experiences on the line that comprise his self-image and determine future performance. Too many missed free throws have become the red lights, the negative feedback instructions that trigger the subconscious to produce equally negative results. If you're an inconsistent free throw shooter yourself, test your own self-image now and let's go to the videotape again. Do you mentally see yourself converting a one-on-one -on -one free throw shot opportunity? Here's the game situation. Your team's down by two points in the closing seconds of an important game. You're on a free throw line, ready to shoot the one-on-one. -on -one. Is there a positive expectancy? Does your mind's eye say, yes, I can? Or if you're honest with yourself, do you see yourself blowing the shot? The law of computers says input determines output. The same law also applies to your game. You become what you think about. For the winner, on the other hand, the good free throw shooter, success is expected. Past shooting successes provide the green lights that free the athlete up to go ahead and score. Just like the electric alarm clock, the cybernetic device is set for a correct wake-up call. Changing your thinking Turning a no I can't, poor self-image into a yes I can, good self-image is essential to our program. The basketball cybernetics program is based on these four basic laws of the mind. Understanding and accepting these principles are essential. Law number one, the self-image determines performance. Law number two, improve the self-image and you improve performance. This means if you can improve the way you think about yourself, a way you think about your skills, you're going to improve your game. 
Here's important law number three. The mind does not always know the difference between a real and an imagined experience. It's time for you to understand what cybernecticians, educators, and hypnotists have learned years ago, that your mind cannot tell the difference between a real experience and one that is vividly imagined. The secret of cybernetics training is that you can improve your game by vividly imagining yourself performing these skills. Over 40 years ago at the University of Chicago, it was clinically proven that the effects of imagined experiences could dramatically improve free throw shooting. A psychologist divided a large group of students into three teams. They had one thing in common. None were basketball players. Group number one shot free throws for 20 minutes a day for 20 straight days and was scored on the first and last day, the 20th day. The second group shot free throws and were scored on the first and last day also, but took no practice at all during the other days. That was the control group. The third group shot free throws and was scored on the first and last day, but was told to spend 20 minutes a day for 18 consecutive days between the two shooting sessions, imagining shooting one successful shot after another. The results were startling. The first group improved 24% between the first and 20th day. That was the group that practiced. The second group, the control group, didn't improve at all. The third group that practiced mentally improved 23%, almost as much as a group that practiced physically. Are you starting to see the possibilities ahead for yourself? A fantastic opportunity to develop new attitudes and skills and turn skill weaknesses into game strengths, if that's what you're interested in. Law number three of the mind is that you're going to recondition your subconscious by making your imagination your best friend rather than your worst enemy. Let's try this mind exercise together to give you a first-hand look at the influence of mental pictures on your subconscious and what the subconscious can do to your body. Sit back now and close your eyes. Relax. I want you to imagine that you have a lemon in your left hand. I want you to take that lemon only in your mind's eye now, don't move a muscle, and bring it up to your nostrils and smell it. Unique fragrance of the lemon. You can smell it. Now in your right hand, you have an imaginary knife. In your mind's eye, I want you to cut the lemon in half. I want you to bring that half a lemon up to your nostrils again and smell the lemon. I want you to now to see one or two, three drops of lemon juice just rolling off the top of that half a cut lemon. I want you to now to imagine that you're gonna take that lemon in your mind's eye and jam it in your mouth and take a big, strong bite. I want you to taste the taut lemon juice swirling around in your mouth. I want you to take another bite and taste that lemon juice swirling it around in your mouth. I know a lemon juice has a very unique and strong taste to it, very tart and very sour. Your mouth is watering. I want you to taste the salivation around in your mouth with the lemon juice. Now open your eyes. Raise your hand if your mouth watered. Now what has happened is this. The painting of a mental picture of the lemon has produced a conditioned response of salivation. It was your subconscious that accepted these imagined experiences as real and sent instructions to your salivary gland to wash away the imagined lemon juice. Now you can use this same power of suggestion to your game. Why don't you go to the movies of your mind and I promise you, you can produce for yourself new skills and a winning set of condition responses. I'll never forget the very first programming ex experience I've had with an athlete on my team. From it, I was to learn how powerful the impact of visualization could have on an athlete. Ken had a classic case of brick hands. They seemed to come with the guarantee, you throw the ball to me and I'll fumble it. Now we drill those hands every day in practice, but practice didn't make perfect for Kenny's hands. In the game, he continued to fumble passes, especially in a crowd. I had recently read the book, Psycho-Cybernetics, by Maxwell Maltz, and I was anxious to try out some of his ideas on my basketball team. First, I wanted to test Ken's self-image. I asked him, what do you see in your mind's eye, Ken, when a ball's thrown to you? His answer surprised me. He said, coach, I see myself blowing it. I said, Kenny, I want you to try out this new drill this new exercise. I want you to go to the movies of your mind. We're not gonna drill your hands anymore, but we're going to drill your hands in a movie. 
I want you to be a star of this movie. I want to see yourself in a ball game. I want you to, I mean, make it as realistic as possible. As the ball's thrown to you in a ball game, can I want you to hear the crowd? I even want you to create an aggressive defense around you, surrounding you. You're jumping up and making all kinds of great catches. You're catching the low pass, the high pass. You're diving for the ball, but always you're coming up with a great catch. Within a few weeks of this daily mental programming, the improvement in Ken's hands were amazing. He was catching all kinds of passes, high passes, low passes, in a crowd, just like he imagined, but he was doing it on the floor. The success story was Ken's. He became all league and all county at the end of that season. Now, we had helped Ken's hands with the help of cybernetics training. We turned a scar into a star. The fourth and final cybernetic law of the mind is the belief that you have an inborn instinct to succeed, a success mechanism, if you will. Activating your subconscious is not as difficult as you might think. It works on two basic principles. First, it needs a positive, clear-cut goal. Like a computer, it needs to be plugged in. And two, it needs positive feedback information, positive pictures. A confident self-image will provide these pictures for you. What you're about to see will help you believe in the existence of your own success mechanism. Let's go to a videotape of a basketball clinic I presented on Long Island to the top 100 players in Suffolk County to prove my point. You each have a success mechanism. You each have a power mechanism to get you what you want. I'm talking about specifically being a clutch shooter from the free throw line. I'm talking about being a better, more powerful player, a stronger player inside having a finer touch on the outside, being able to see peripherally, see the entire court, being able to make a clutch layup, being able to be the play that you really want to be, and for some reason, something can screw you up. And the harder you work, it seems, the worse you get, or at least you don't fulfill your potential in your own mind. What I'm going to tell you right now is that you have a success mechanism. I'm going to prove it to you. I'm going to tell you how it works, and then I'm going to try to encourage you to use it but it's up to you. It's up to you to see how you want to use your own success mechanism to get what you want, depending on what you want for the season. Maybe it's just playing time. Maybe you want to be the best. Maybe you want to be all county. Maybe you only want to make the team. Whatever it is, your success mechanism will help you get what you want. Now, what is it? It's your subconscious. Your subconscious. It's a mechanism that allows you to tie your shoelaces. It's a mechanism that allows you to jump high and jump higher if you know how to use it. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to show you how to operate that mechanism to have quicker feet. We're going to show you how to operate that mechanism to jump higher. And we're going to, this is not stage, and I don't want anyone that's been at any of my camps or had listened to me before to go up. I want someone that's new and wants to try something and improve their vertical jump. Okay? What I've said so far is that you have a success mechanism, it's a subconscious, and I'm going to show you how to operate it. All right, now I need some volunteers. Now here's what I'd like. I would like about six guys, okay, that would like to come up here that have never tried this before, okay, and would like to see if their success mechanism would work for them in a little drill test that we're going to use right now. I need, I need six volunteers, okay? One, two, three, four, five, six. Thank you. Okay? All right, what I'd like you to do now is pair off. And get into the three-second lane. I would like you to get into the three-second lane and your partner, whoever he is, to stand on the outside over there. He's going to count for you. <clears throat> okay? Get in right here. Stand here. You stand right over there and you stand behind him. You're going to count for him. You're going to count for him. You're going to count for him. Okay? You're going to do a little drill for 30 seconds, side steps. We're going to see how quick your feet are, okay? Then we're going to do a little cybernetic technique and see if we can increase your speed, okay? You're going to count. Now imagine a line right down the middle of this three-second lane, and you're straddling it now in a defensive position. Get into uh, stance. Okay, now you're going to side step and touch this line. Side step and touch this line. Okay, now you're going to side with your feet. Now you're going to sidestep and touch the side uh, line over there. All right, and then come on back. Okay, and back. Okay. Now, this is line one, two, three. There's an imaginary line that you're going to straddle. 
The first point will be when you touch or step over this line. Then you'll go over that line and over that line over there, okay? You got 30 seconds to get as many lines as you can. Let's just warm up for a second. Ready? Go. Don't cross your legs. All right, stop. Okay, now we're gonna do it for real. I want you guys to count. Now, here's how I want you to count. Let's start going to this line first. This is your first point. Then you're gonna point with your finger the middle line. It'll make it easier so you don't forget the score. And then you'll go over there. It's very important that we have an accurate score because we're gonna retest them in a minute. All right, so you got it. One, two, three, four, five, six. At the end of 30 seconds, uh, uh, the, it'll be over. Now, try to get as many lines as you can. I really want you to go, this is it for the county championship, okay? All right, on your mark, get set, go. Stop. Okay, now let's switch it around. All right, you guys just practice now. Ready? Go. Don't cross your legs. Get as many lines as you can. Okay, stop. Okay, you loosened up. All right, ready? You're going to go 30 seconds, as many lines as you can. Don't forget to count with your fingers, if you will. Go! Stop. Okay. Now, I want to know your score. Anybody get over 50? All right. You guys that went over 50, line yourself up numerically with the lowest 50 here and the, and the top 50 on the back. Anybody go over 60? All right, anybody go under 50? All right, come on up here. What's your name? Jason Feinberg. Jason? Jason Feinberg. All right, Jason. What school are you from? No place. Okay. Jason, you're right over here. Okay, what did you do? 44. 44. All right, get, you, what did you do, Jason? 49. Okay, in front of him. What did you do? 47. 47, right over here. Okay, what'd you do? 54. What'd you do? 52. 52. Okay, just switch it around. All right, you, did, you guys, did, you did 52, 54, and 54. All right. You have a success mechanism. It'll work for you. It'll make you a better player. It'll make you quicker if you want, if that's what you're, really what you want. Unfortunately, you don't play a game called follow the leader in life. Unfortunately, you play a game called follow the follower. You watch the slowest perform, or you, you watch people don't do well, and you got a little lazy in Tennessee, and you say, well, maybe I don't want to do it. I don't want to work hard today. And so you follow him rather than following the leaders. We're going to play a game called follow the leader and see if we can improve the score. You three guys, get over there. You three guys. Now, these are the three quickest feet in this test. Now, what I want you to use are your eyes as a, as a video camera, just like the camera that's watching us right now. You've got a video camera. It's your eyes, okay? And what I want you to do is look at these legs, and these are quicker legs, okay, because the scores were more than yours. And I want you to just pay no judgment, make no judgment on these legs, but watch the legs. But I want you to do one additional thing. As you're watching the legs, I want you to actually feel the legs. They're your legs. I want you to hear the legs as well as see them. See them, hear them. I want you to feel the legs as, you, as these legs being your legs. And then we're going to retest you and see if there's an increase in score. What we're going to try to do is give your computer brain new kind of images. And it's the athlete's mind that thinks in pictures, not words, that will allow an athlete to become better. And we're going to prove that point w with uh, getting the rim uh, drill and this one right here. All right? You're going to go this way and move back this way, back and forth. We're not going to keep score, but they are going to watch. Now, you can watch one pair, set of legs or all three if you want. All right, ready? Go. See the legs? Hear the legs? Feel the legs? Stop. All right. Can you see them, feel them, and hear them with your eyes closed right now? If you can't, be honest with me. We're going to do it again. Close your eyes. Open them again, and let's just try it one more time. Ready? Go. All right, stop. All right, can you see, feel, and hear those legs in your mind's eye? That subconscious needs a clear-cut goal. Now, here's what I want you to do. I want you to look up at the scoreboard and see your name up there, where it says home. You're going to see your name up there, and you're going to go up by two points. All right, now, you're going to see your name up there, and your first name is? Bob. Bob, where it says visitors, and you're going to see what score up there? 46. 46.
46, because you did 44. Okay, Chris? Are you ready? And I'm going to count here. We're all going to go. You're going to count for him. All right, you, I'll count for him. Okay? You count for him, you count for him. You're going for 46. Okay? You're going for 49. You're going for 51, Jason. Okay. All right, whenever he says go. Go! Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, forty, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, fifty, fifty-one, fifty-two, fifty-three, fifty-four. 54. Let's give him a hand. All right. What did he do? He did 53. How many did you do? 51. He got 51 right on the button. All right. All right. All right. You guys get over there and spread back, okay? We're going to do one more thing, and you're saying, and I know all you coaches that are watching, are saying, well, how is this going to make my team better? I'm going to tell you exactly how it can make your team better because I've committed myself to this, and it really has helped so many players get into the winner's circle. And what I mean by the winner's circle is not getting a championship season. I mean being as good a player as you possibly can. And you take the best player, the most talented player in this gym, and he won't make it unless he can turn a weakness into a strength because he will have that weakness exposed and there's nothing as great in abundance as talented players that are not successful so we're going to show you a formula that can help you get what you want on the court and also off the court if you're smart now here's what i'd like you guys to do get over there and we're going to see how high you jump and we're going to see if we can improve your vertical jump two or three inches okay i want all you guys to get over there and go for that rim as they're jumping i'm going to tell you what i'm going to try to do I'm going to try to get each one of them two or three inches higher. All right? Now, your success mechanism, your subconscious works on two principles. Now, listen to me. One, it needs a clear-cut goal. A clear-cut goal. Too many of us come into a game or in a season and say, well, I want to be all county. Or I want to score 20 points a ball game. Or I want to have 10 assists. Or I want to be, I want to get at least... Uh, 30 minutes a game playing time. Too vague. What you have to have is specific goal, like the side steps. We had a specific goal. You've got to have a specific goal. Your specific goal should be your weakness turning into a strength. I'm going to give you a formula that will turn your weakness into a strength by the, by the first day of practice in mid-November. All right, now come on over here and let me mark your jump, your best jump on your hand. Where was your best jump? All right. All right, stay right here. Come on over here. I want to mark. If you haven't touched the rim, that's fine. You just touched here. Did anybody not touch the rim? You missed the rim? All right, you missed the rim, okay? He missed the rim. We're going to show him how to use his subconscious, see if he can get the, the rim. Uh, how far under the rim were you? Okay. All right, you were right here. Right here, right here, where else? Right there, okay, I got you guys. Now come on over here and let's face them. What did I say your subconscious needs? A clear cut goal. Well, let's give them a clear cut goal. Put your hand up. All right, we're gonna get you to jump up here. All right, we're gonna try to get you to jump up here. We're gonna try to get you to jump up here. We're gonna try to get you to jump up here. We don't know if we can do it, but we're gonna try, okay? All right, you haven't hit the rim, and we're going to try to get you to touch the rim. Okay? We're going to see if we can get him to touch the rim. Thank you. You were up here. We're going to see if we can get you to get up here. All right? The second principle that your subconscious requires to operate successfully for you is that it needs pictures, not words. 